keeps getting my name psych. This is Christine. There's a giant bug next to me. And there's a giant no. bug here. Excuse me. Okay. Right here Sorry. in the middle of nowhere. Nice river behind us. If I had a red card, I would hold it up and like... <laughs> there's something moving back here. <laughs> Am I really sure? Okay, so these are real ghost stories. Nothing's made up. The stuff that really happened. So I'm thinking of one. This happened around 2001. And I was a sheriff's deputy in a rural area in New Mexico. And a uh, fairly new cop. Uh, by the way, I've been a cop for over 20 years, getting ready to retire. But I was a fairly new cop. I was a cop for probably two, two and a half years, something like that. And it's uh, like late afternoon, three o'clock in the afternoon. And we have a major interstate that comes through our county, Interstate 40, I 40. And we get a call of a semi crash. So uh, I just have to be fairly close to the area. I respond to the area on the interstate. In fact, I'm the first one there. And there's a uh, prime semi, prime company, the RIME, uh, painted on the side. The semi was eastbound on I 40. And uh, he rear ended a U haul going the same direction. Obviously, he rear ended it. And uh, he swerved off to the right after he bumped a U haul. It went into a, off the interstate, and alongside the road was a pipe fence made out of well piping. And it's a long fence, it's you know, several acres that are fenced in with this pipe fence. So uh, the semi swerves off to the right, gets off the road, gets into this pipe fence. And uh, this pipe fence just starts filling the cab up. There's pipe going through the firewall next to the engine, inside the cab, it's in the sleeper. And when I get there, <coughs> the semi is upside down. And there's, little, there's pipe just sticking out. It looks like a porcupine. There's just pipe coming out of every direction. He had a ton of pipe inside that truck. So there's diesel spilling. It smells like something's on fire. You know, electric, electrical, the wiring is melting. So there's a lot of stuff going on. I crouched down, look inside, and I don't even see a driver. And first I thought maybe he got ejected or something because I didn't even see anybody. So now other units start showing up. Uh, two more deputies show up. And uh, <clears throat> we start... The fire department shows up and they make sure nothing's going to blow up. So we started looking inside the truck and uh, the smallest deputy that was there, we volunteered him because the cab was somewhat crushed. So he gets down on his hands and knees and he crawls in through the driver's side window. And what happened is the driver, uh, as the pipe started coming through the firewall, a piece of pipe caught him in the shoulder uh, on this side. And it yanked him off the seat and put him in the sleeper upside down and it basically just ripped his neck open and his shoulder open. It's pretty gross. And he bled out. He's upside down and there's, there's no saving him. I don't want to be too graphic about it, but it took us forever to get him out. But I helped get him out of the truck and we put him on a gurney, you know, along with the firefighters. Uh, we didn't put them on a gurney. The firefighters <laughs> assisted. Well, we assisted them usually. But being a fairly new cop, it's the kind of thing you remember. And uh, since I was the first one there, it was my crash. And rule of thumb for us was always first one seen takes the call, does the report. So I have to collect information I'm waiting for or my office of medical investigator to get there so he can, you know, pronounce the body dead and checks his pockets and gives me his ID and stuff. So I get his information. He was from, uh, the driver was from Nashville, Tennessee. He was the only person in the truck. But he was very distinctive the way I remember it. He was wearing blue jeans. He had brown, like, moccasin shoes on. He had a green mossy oak, uh, like a real light jacket on, he had gray hair and a gray beard. And uh, I think he was somewhere in his 50s. So I did a report and everything's good. You know, wait for the scene to get cleared up, it takes forever. And I go home, and this was my, my Friday. So I went on days off after this. So the, the following day, uh, the sergeant that comes to work, he wasn't working the day before on that wreck, he comes out and uh, he calls me up about 11 o'clock at night on my day off. He says, hey, something really weird happened to me. And we're always kind of looking out for paranormal stuff because where we work, there's always something going on. And I knew it was something pretty good because he called me at 11 o'clock to wake me up on my day off. And I'm like, what's going on? And he goes, well, I'm going down the interstate, east I-40, and there's a French road that runs alongside of it. And I see a person walking over there. So it's... He goes to the next exit, which is like three miles up the road. Exits, comes back on the French road, 
and he sees this guy walk, walking. So he stops and he goes, you know, is everything all right? It's pitch dark out there, there's no lights. And he asked the guy, is everything okay? And the guy just, he said the guy acted really robotic like, he just didn't really want to talk. And he said, well, I can give you a blanket, I can give you some water and stuff. It's, you know, you're out here in the middle of nowhere, I can give you a ride back into town to a drug stop or whatever. The guy says, no, I don't want to be a bother to anybody, I'm just going home. And the deputy asked him, you know, where's home? And he goes, Tennessee, Nashville, Tennessee. And the deputies had a real weird feeling about, you know, the cop sense, six sense thing. Because the guy was just not right. <clears throat> so, uh, a state police officer is going down the interstate and sees the deputy on the side of the, road, road, on the, side of the frontage road with his tailgate lifted up. He was driving a Ford Expedition. And he had the tailgate lifted up to get a blanket and water out for this guy when he was talking to him. So the state police officer on the interstate thinks that the deputy has a flat tire. So he goes up to the next exit and comes back on the same road that the deputy took. And he pulls up to the deputy and he says, what are you doing? He goes, well, I was just trying to offer this old guy a ride and give him some water or a blanket. And they turn around and the old guy's gone. And the deputy's like, didn't you see him walking? I mean, you should have been walking on the road that you just came down on. And the state cop's like, no, there's nobody here. So I said, huh. So uh, I asked the deputy, I said, so what did this guy look like? And he goes, well, there's an older guy, gray hair, gray beard. He's wearing a green mossy oak jacket. He said mossy oak in the front. He goes, he was wearing moccasins. He goes, he was really weird acting, and like nothing he's ever seen before. He pretty much described exactly the guy that I loaded on that gurney out of that truck. And when he told me that, you know, I asked him where exactly where he at, and he was directly across from where that truck had wrecked and where he, where he got killed. He was directly across the interstate from that. So that was, that was pretty weird. I mean, for him, and the deputy had no idea of the wreck the day before because he was on days off, and we had a lot of wrecks on the interstate. But he described this guy to a T. And when he told me that story, it was pretty damn scary. That's pretty sad, too, if you think mm -hmm. about it. So I got plenty more stories like that. This is just one of many. Eventually, I'm going to invite other cops on this channel if it takes off and have them tell some of their stories. But a lot of weird stuff going on. Uh, we're out here in Chama, New Mexico right now camping and me and Christine found an old cemetery and we were just checking it out. And, uh, there's some super old graves back there that are almost unmarked. Some go back to the mid 1800s. We were just looking at them and I had my cell phone recorder on. And when I get back to, the, to our camping spot here, we're listening to the recording. I picked up three EVPs. Uh, we don't have Wi-Fi out here, so as soon as I get them downloaded, I'll put them on my channel. But pretty strange, middle of the day cemetery. I got three three EVPs out there, voices that aren't us for that sure. Was creepy. That so, was no, that really was pretty creepy. cool. So we're gonna keep posting stuff like that. All right, till next time. Bye. Bye.